This is a teardown of the Boss Audio head unit with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on a 7-inch screen. But as you'll see, this applies to most products that Boss makes. So the product itself is a single DIN head unit. Here's the back of it. Mounts in your car. You clip on this 7-inch screen and it can pivot. It has a volume knob, capacitive touchscreen, clips on. You get the idea. The shell itself is pretty easy to crack open. Just one screw on the top to pull off the top panel. Undo some screws to release the connectors and two screws that are holding in the main board. The front just comes off with four screws. There's no tamper seals. Pretty simple. There is a ribbon cable to this daughter board that connects to the screen. And there's some connectors in here that go onto the board for this external harness. Now to the board itself. So here's the top of the unit with some wiring information. And here is the board itself. So if you read carefully, you can see the actual model number here. Um, the internal model number, which is CVD9502. It turns out that this is actually by an ODM called Lightcom Technology. Lightcom makes products for a lot of companies, including Android tablets for Walmart under the on ONN brand, and they make this particular PCB for a large family of head units like Soundstorm, Planet Audio, Nakamichi, and Boss Audio. So let's dive into what makes this tick. The Big Center SoC is the SunPlus SPHE8368. Lots of pins. It's got an ARM A9 processor core. It has six channels ADC in, 4.1 channels on DAC out. It has a TV decoder, LVDS video output up to 1080p, an embedded GPS baseband, and all the other fancy features you'd expect for an SOC for your average car head unit. Right next to it, you have some SPI NAND from ESMT. And now let's look at what makes it tick and what it's doing. So over here, we have the 3Peak TP2264. It's a four-channel amplifier. It's a pretty small one, so I'm guessing it's doing the unamplified stereo audio ports for front and rear. We've also got two subwoofer outs, which I'm assuming is being powered by back here. Let's find it. This little one, which is the DMS Electronics CHMC D4558. It's a dual op amp. There's another one of those over here. I have no idea what the extra two channel op amp is for. I'm not sure what you're sending out because this is audio in, this is video in. These outputs are already covered by the ones I pointed out. There's no extra outputs for the car harness, besides obviously the amplified channels. So I really don't know what you need another two-channel op amp for. If we keep going, we've got a Barrett BR8051 A01 Bluetooth 5.2 IC. It's pretty beefy. It's got its own built-in RISC processor, 96 kilobytes of RAM, 512 kilobytes of flash, uh, supports an I2S channel or I squared S channel in and communicates with the SOC over UART or USB. It's got its little trace right there for the antenna. Obviously, it just comes with its own chip. Looks like a power regulator there. Nothing interesting. You can see some of the connectors. So here's the other end of the ribbon cable connector for the display, probably using LVDS. TP is touch panel. I guess this. Um, All-in-one display connector does that. Key would probably be for buttons, maybe steering wheel control integration. SD as well, SD card. Obviously not included here. Not sure what's going on over here and what it's connected to because those traces don't seem to go anywhere interesting. Kind of power related, kind of related to these. Could be anything, probably displays though, considering how many pins are on it. I'll stop speculating. Um, over here, obviously, you've got the power in, the fuse, you know, big ol' inductor and capacitor, some basic VRMs, I assume. This is an interesting little PMIC. 
that is specific to head units, and so it supports uh, putting out 3.3 volts for the main SOC, a 12 volt outline for the camera outs, which is this connector. Um, it can detect a few input lines and then step them down to a nice SOC safe voltage to detect the parking brake, if the um, headlight circuit is on for interior button illumination, if the reverse is on, if the car's accessory power is on, etc. And of course it does your usual reverse protection, um, over voltage protection, you get the idea. Um, got some basic regulators, and that's about it on the front side, so we shall flip it over. On the back we've got a few more components. I already see some regulators. I already pointed out this two-channel op amp for the probably the subwoofer out considering its location. This is an interesting IC. This is the MM32SPIN. It's an ARM M0 microcontroller with 32K of flash, 4K of SRAM, and your basic dumb peripherals, a single 12-channel um, ADC, a little 4K EEPROM here. But I don't get why this is here, because you've got a big beefy processor over here with lots of peripherals that can do stuff async if you're worried about, like, processor contention. I'm not sure what you really need this for. This feels like a lot of BOM. And if you really want to get fancy with engineering, you could probably take this Bluetooth IC and have it control some stuff, because, again, it's sitting on UART line. It's got I, I squared S. Got a lot of spare processing power, although I'm sure it's a pain to develop for. So maybe for ease of development, maybe recycling something, they just kept the same uh, microcontroller. But it's a really, really dumb microcontroller, so I really don't get what it's doing. If we try to follow the traces briefly, we'll see they kind of go out to here, which is kind of the buttons. So maybe there's not enough um, pins on the main SOC, and so they decided that all the in-car buttons or head unit button handling or other control stuff could be handled by this. But then, since this panel, this connector is not populated on this, you think they would just omit the microcontroller. And it's a again, it's a pretty beefy one. It has an RMM zero instead of a you know proprietary or risk construction set. But it's got so few peripherals that I feel like that's, again, a waste of money. Back here you've got a DAC. I'll just assume that this is what sends output over to the big ol' amplifier. That then goes straight to the amplified outs. Got an unpopulated connector over here. Which I couldn't really follow traces. Again, this PCP is pretty complex and multi-layer. So, can't really guess what it does. Through hole, obviously. Only traces are back over here. Kind of close to the power. Hmm. Radio in. If there's an IC in here, you can't find it. Probably is one. And... Crystal. That's, again, about it. Some power supplies. I guess the reverse camera and front camera in are handled directly by the SOC. It seems to only support um, composite or CV um, BS, which is too bad. It doesn't support any of the HD um, video ins. Um, there isn't an actual data sheet available for this chip, but there is a page on the manufacturer site and leaked data sheets for some similar chips. Um, here are the USB ports. And I'm sure they're getting some nice beefy voltage because they each supply 1.5 amps. So, you know, one of these, one of these is probably giving them the juice. Probably this one. The only cooling on here is for the amplifier. I hope the main IC can get cool enough. Maybe that's what they're doing back here. So I'll just grab some thermal glue and a small heatsink and slap it on to stop this from overheating just in case. This is used for a lot of systems, especially since this SOC can output 1080p over LVDS, so I'm sure um, looking at the model numbers, this powers most of BOSS's systems. Again, they're just white labeling from Litecom. 
and so this probably powers their 8 inch, 9 inch, and 10 inch models. Um, not too many unpopulated um, actual sets of pads for additional ICs. So I'm guessing this is almost like the full um, set of components. Again, this is incredibly tiny. And so you can see how even inside this very narrow singleton package, there really isn't a lot. I haven't installed this in my car yet. I just got it and tore it apart to check the internals. So no clue about the audio quality, but I've heard it's relatively good. And my Camry actually has its own amplifier from the factory that the previous radio installer bypassed, which made it sound like crap. So I might use the unamplified outputs anyway and maybe worry about my own subwoofer. But I'll stop blathering and finish this teardown and explanation of the internals. Pretty interesting look at how one of the cheapest name brand head units gets made. The answer is a bunch of really obscure companies dedicated to the space and a weird ADC from Zarlink. Specifically, I remember, I gotta read. There we go. The Zarlink 4366 that has no documentation at all. Just some, you know, spare salvaged ICs for sale. Zarlink got acquired in 2011 and this is obviously a pretty new design. So I'm kind of surprised they went with such an old one. I guess whatever was cheapest or what they could recycle from previous designs. All right, thanks for watching.